Chapter Two, Bum Boy. Bum Boy, said Joe. Bum Boy, spluttered Mr Spud. What else do they call you at school, son? The bog roll kid. Mr Spud shook his head in disbelief. He had sent his son to the most expensive school in England, St Cuthbert's School for Boys. The fees were £200,000 a term and all the boys had to wear Elizabethan ruffs and tights. Here is a picture of Joe in his school uniform. He looks a bit silly, doesn't he? So the last thing that Mr Spud expected was that his son would get bullied. Bullying was something that happened to poor people. But the truth was that Joe had been picked on ever since he started at the school. The posh kids hated him because his dad had made his money out of loo rolls. They said it was awfully vulgar. Bottom billionaire, the bum white hair, master pot paper, continued Joe, and that's just the teachers. Most of the boys at Joe's school were princes, or at least dukes or earls. Their families had made their fortunes from owning a lot of land. That made them old money. Joe had quickly come to learn that money was only worth having if it was old. New money from selling loo rolls didn't count. The posh boys at St Cuthbert's had names like Nathaniel Septimus Ernest Bertram Lysander Tybalt Zacharias Edmund Alexander Humphrey Percy Quentin Tristan Augustus Bartholomew Tarquin Imogen Sebastian Theodore Clarence Smythe. That was just one boy. The subjects were all ridiculously posh too. This was Joe's timetable. Monday. Latin. Straw hat wearing. Royal studies. The study of etiquette. Show jumping. Ballroom dancing. Debating society. This house believes that it is vulgar to do your bottom button up on your waistcoat. Scone eating. Bow tie tying. Punting. Polo. The sport with horses and sticks, not the mint. Tuesday, ancient Greek, croquet, pheasant shooting, being beastly to servants class, mandolin level three, history of tweed, nose in the air hour, learning to step over the homeless person as you leave the opera, finding your way out of a maze. Wednesday, fox hunting, flower arranging, conversing about the weather, history of cricket, History of Brogue, playing stately home tr trumps, reading Harper's Bazaar, ballet appreciation class, top hat polishing, fencing, the one with swords, not selling stolen goods. Thursday, antique furniture appreciation hour, Range Rover tyre changing class, discussion of whose daddy is the richest, competition to see who is best friends with Prince Harry. Learning to talk posh, rowing club, debating society. This house believes that muffins are best toasted. Chess, the study of coats of arms, a lecture on how to talk loudly in restaurants. Friday, poetry reading, medieval English. History of wearing corduroy, topiary class, classical sculpture appreciation class. Spotting yourself in the party pages of Tatler Hour. Duck hunting, billiards, classical music appreciation afternoon, dinner party discussion topic class, e.g. how the working classes smell. However, the main reason why Joe hated going to St Cuthbert's wasn't the silly subjects. It was the fact that everyone at the school looked down on him. They thought that someone whose papa made their money from bog rolls was just too, too frightfully common. I want to go to a different school, Dad, said Joe. No problem, I can afford to send you to the poshest schools in the world. I heard about this place in Switzerland. You ski in the morning and then... No, said Joe. How about I go to the local comp? What? said Mr Spud. I might make a friend there, said Joe. He'd seen the kids milling around the school gates when he was being chauffeured to St Cuthbert's. They all looked like they were having such a great time. 
chatting, playing games, swapping cards. To Joe, it looked so fabulously normal. Yes, but the local comp, said Mr Spud incredulously. Are you sure? Yes, said Joe defiantly. I could build you a school in the back garden if you like, offered Mr Spud. No, I want to go to a normal school with normal kids. I want to make a friend, Dad. I don't have a single friend at St Cuthbert's. But you can't go to a normal school. You're a billionaire boy. All the kids will either bully you or want to be friends with you just because you are rich. It'll be a nightmare for you. Well then, I won't tell anyone who I am. I'll just be Joe. And maybe, just maybe, I'll make a friend or even two. Mr Spud thought for a moment and then relented. If that's what you really want, Joe, then OK, you can go to a normal school. Joe was so excited he bum jumped along the sofa. Bum jumping, verb, bum jumping. To move places while sitting, using only your bottom to power you, thus meaning you do not have to get up, much favoured by the overweight. He bum jumped along the sofa nearest to his dad to give him a cuddle. Don't crease the soup, boy, said Mr Spud. Sorry, Dad, said Joe, bum jumping back a little. He cleared his throat. Um, I love you, Dad. Yes, son, ditto, ditto, said Mr Spud as he rose to his feet. Well, have a good birthday, mate. Aren't we going to try and do something together tonight, said Joe, trying to hide his disappointment. When he was younger, Joe's dad would always take him to the local burger restaurant as a birthday treat. They couldn't afford the burgers, so they would just order the chips and eat them with some ham and pickle sandwiches that Mr Spud would smuggle in under his hat. I can't, son, sorry. I've got a date with this beautiful girl tonight, said Mr Spud, indicating page three of the sun. Joe looked at the page. There was a photograph of a woman whose clothes seemed to have fallen off. Her hair was dyed white blonde and she had so much makeup on it was difficult to tell if she was pretty or not. Underneath the image it read, Sapphire, 19, from Bradford. Like shopping, hates thinking. Don't you think Sapphire's a little young for you, Dad? asked Joe. It's only a 27 year age gap, replied Mr Spud in an instant. Joe wasn't convinced. Well, where are you taking this Sapphire? A nightclub. A nightclub, asked Joe. Yes, said Mr Spud in an offended tone. I am not too old to go to a nightclub. As he spoke, he opened a box and pulled out what looked like a hamster that had been flattened by a mallet and put it on his head. What on earth is that, Dad? What's what, Joe? replied Mr Spud with mock innocence as he adjusted the contraption to cover his bald dome. That thing on your head. Oh, this is a toupee boy. Only ten grand each. I bought a blonde one, a brown one, a ginger one and an afro for special occasions. It makes me look 20 years younger, don't you think? Joe didn't like to lie. The toupee didn't make his dad look younger. Instead, it made him look like a man who was trying to balance a dead rodent on his head. Therefore, Joe chose a non-committal. Hmm. Right, well, have a good night, Joe added, picking up the remote. It looked like just him and the 100-inch TV again. There's some caviar in the fridge for your tea, son, said Mr Spud as he headed for the door. What's caviar? It's fish eggs, son. Ugh! Joe didn't even like normal eggs much. Eggs laid by a fish sounded really revolting. Yeah, I had some on toast for me breakfast. It's absolutely disgusting, but it's very expensive, so we should start eating it. Can't we just have bangs and mash or fish and chips or shepherd's pie or something, Dad? Mmm, I used to love shepherd's pie, son. Mr Spud drooled a little, as if imagining the taste of shepherd's pie. Well then? Mr Spud shook his head impatiently. No, no, no. We are rich, son. We have to eat all this posh stuff now, like proper rich people do. See you later. The door slammed behind him and moments later, Joe heard the deafening roar of his father's lime green Lamborghini speeding off into the night. Joe was disappointed to be on his own again, but he still couldn't suppress a small smile as he turned on the TV. He was going to go to an ordinary school again and be an ordinary boy and maybe, just maybe, make a friend. The question was, how long could Joe keep the fact that he was a billionaire a secret? Thank <laughs> you.